when you're doing technical stuff like this, the ability to shift when you're stationary while keeping your balance to get into the right gear to get over an obstacle, it's just immense. It just means you never, you, can, you just ride without dabbing your foot down. Even in the crazy, I know this is a, a bit technical, not too crazy, but when I did the Cairngorm loop, you get into a really technical part, you're stationary, you don't need to put your foot down, just drop a few gears and you can get out of any situation. It's really, really amazing that. Tire choice is a weird thing, isn't it? Because it's like yesterday I was on, on here and I know it's a bit drier than yesterday, but uh, I had my 22, sorry, 29, 29 er wheels on which were 2.2 .2, and I was sliding a bit and I was thinking, do you know what, I wish I'd have kept my three inch tires on and I've come on this one which has only got 1.8 on today and it's not slipping or sliding anywhere and it's a similar tread pattern and everything so weird but another lovely day on the Mars so people want to know about the pinion uh, gearbox and does it drag what does the extra weight feel like and I'm gonna just I know I've done this in other videos but I just want to reiterate a, a few things um, about the gearbox because I've absolutely loved coming out on it today and uh, I'm just going to uh, go through those. Now I cannot tell of any drag at all and I'm not just saying that, I honestly can't. But I think what some people might con perceive as drag is you've got to get your head around this that your crank arm is not connected uh, directly to your chain ring so to speak. And what I mean by that is normally your crank arm is connected to your chain ring and when you turn your crank arm your chain ring turns at the same ratio as your but you can see here that the two are connected and depending on what your gear what gear you're in this will turn at a different speed to your crank arm which I suppose can feel a bit weird so I, I think that's what some people might perceive as as drag as because you know normally you're turning this and depending on what gear you're in this is it's all turning together but this like you can see depending on what gear you're in your chain ring will turn at a different speed Well, I can't tell you about any lab tests or anything like that, but all I know is that yesterday I did this ride and today I've done it, yesterday I did it on my derailleur bike and today I've done it on my pinion bike and all I know is I've got up here a hell of a lot easier and quicker than I did yesterday. Now I know it was a bit wetter yesterday, but I've just really enjoyed riding this today. Lovely. Another issue people have is with the twist shift and uh, I don't understand why you wouldn't want one to tell you the truth. I've got every single shift in your can on every single bike. I've got down tube friction shifters, I've got index shifting, I've got bar end friction and index shifting and it's just a way to shift. And to me this is the most easier and most uh, straightforward. You just <laughs> now the only reason you may not want to do that is because you might have mobility issues but it's such a light action you, know, you, can, you can change gear stationary you don't understand uh, the issues behind that at all and if you can't back off for a millisecond when you're going up a hill to change gear then The only negative I find, and bear in mind, I have no grievance against electric bikes whatsoever, but when people think that you're on one and you're still struggling up a hill, that's that's when it sort of like does your head in. When they say stuff like, uh, I thought you'd be going faster than that on an electric bike. 
Um, let's get this straight for you people in England because these are very popular in Europe and America. This is not a motor, it's a gearbox. A bike with a, a gearbox, you're probably looking at about a thousand pound more than what you'd pay for an equivalent with a derailleur. But when you bear in mind that this you never replace ever again. A cassette on a on a one by twelve Shimano, you're looking at 150 quid each time. You know your derailleurs, chain rings, all that sort of stuff. Bottom brackets, no bottom bracket. So, you know, if you're gonna, if you're thinking about it like that, it makes more sense, doesn't it? Really. How much are chains as well? Crazy amount of money nowadays. Well, it defies the, uh, the logic of what makes a bike ride on terrain like this. Yesterday I was on a 29er with 2.2s with a 68 degree head angle. I know it's quite reserved nowadays, but today I've done it on this with 47 mil tires and I've had more fun and it was been easier. So I think the message we can have is do not obsess over angles, do not obsess over tire sizes, just get out on your bike and have some fun. Just get outside. So uh, for people in England, pinion gearboxes have been around now for about 15 years. 2010, something like that. I think the first one came out. And roll off gearboxes, they've been around since the 80s. But uh, I do think people are starting to cotton onto them now in England because Sonder Alkit now have three models that have a pinion gearbox. So, um, yeah, check them out. Really nice titanium, three models of titanium pinion bikes, which look really, really nice.